Well, hello, and welcome to the Photo Brigade podcast. I'm Robert Kaplan. Uh, today, I'm here with my friend BP Miller. How you doing, BP? Um, I'm here. You're so here. You made it. <laughs> I made it from Philly to here. I didn't know if there would be a New York to come to today, but here we are. So today, I guess, you know, people who, depending on when you're watching, if you're watching now live on Facebook Live, hello, um, feel free to ask some questions and make sure to, to you know, like our page and share it. But uh, we are on election day, e- not Eve, post-election. Post. Uh, yesterday was election Apri day. Election. We have a, a new president-elect. We do. Uh, Mr. President Trump. Yes. <laughs> yes. Um, and we're not here to talk about politics, but uh, that was a, a definitely a... Yeah, I mean, if, I, if on all the, the episodes that I could have come on it, the day after uh, the, 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 the most memorable election of all time. So, yeah, it's... You don't have to respect the man to respect the process. That's true. So, I that's mean, true. That's, we, we're here and we move on. Yep. Um, So we are, uh, you were saying you're from Philly and uh, we're going to talk about your career path uh, because you also were in radio before photography. Was it before photography? Yeah, I spent my my plan A was was radio, was was not photojournalism. Yeah. So we're going to talk all about that. But before we start, I just want to say thank you to Adorama for letting us use their event space to record in on such a regular basis. Nice space. They've just done a a remodeling. Uh, So if you ever make it to New York, please come down, check out uh, what they've done. Um, thank you to Canon Professional Services for all that you do to support Photo Brigade and photographers, as well as uh, Tenba Bags. Yes. So, um, with that being said, let's uh, let's get back to you, BP. Um, okay. So, let's talk about your background. I mean, right now you you work in Philly. Take you, you you do a lot of corporate photography. We do correct? a lot of corporate. For, we uh, like any other freelancers, we do a little bit of everything. I mean, uh-huh. that's what you have to do to survive. Uh, we we opened 10 years ago as Chorus Media Group and we were strictly doing corporate photography. That was it. I didn't I didn't want to do weddings. I didn't want to do mitzvahs. I didn't want to do portraiture. I just wanted to focus on the corporate and we were doing photography, video and voiceover work. And as time went on, I mean, just within the first couple of years, we realized that photography was really going to be what drove us uh, and drove the company forward. So we ditched the voiceover, we ditched the video. Were you doing the voiceover work? I was doing the voiceover work and we had uh, three other voice actors that were doing the voiceover work as well. Interesting. Um, It just, you know... And and were you feeling like a need in that that area for for this range of expertise? You mean in... For the voiceover? Or well, I mean, everything in, that you were providing. Um, obviously, obviously, you've switched mostly, if not all, yeah, to photography at yeah, this point. Absolutely. We we when we first opened, and that's where the name Chorus came from. It was the idea of offering, you know, a a, a chorus of services, which is that's that's where the name came. But it, we realized. I mean, there are a lot of people that do voiceover work out there, and either you are a full time voiceover actor or you're not. Uh, coming from radio, I mean, I spent years and years voicing commercials and radio stations and and doing all that kind of stuff. So for me, it was kind of that transitionary, okay, I'm going from my plan A to my plan B. Maybe I can kind of keep a little of it together. Um, So whether it was poor planning or just kind of uh, hyper idealized saying, oh, I can make it work and and do what I still love to do. It just kind of went by the wayside. And as a videographer goes, I'm great at storyboarding. I'm great at directing. I can see an entire, the way everything should be laid out. The uh, editing aspect of it drove me insane. Um, oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I just could not get into it. And I'm not a great, you know, as far as I'm a great photographer, as far as, you know, I'm concerned, I am not a great videographer. And uh, and even saying I'm a great photographer kind of goes against what I would normally say. But compared to a videographer, I'm a much better photographer. Right, so right, right. Kind of so as we talk about your, your background and everything, I'm going to go through some photos. This okay. is just a random dis- display that we, yes. that we kind of pulled off of Dropbox yeah. right now. And we're going to look <laughs> through your website and everything, too. So that'll play in the background as we talk. Okay. So um, tell me about your transition into photography. Um, I've always enjoyed and loved photography. I mean, from a young age, my... I, my very first camera was a was a Polaroid. I mean, the 600 and, and it, at age six or seven, and I loved. I mean, I would blow through photos at a, an alarming rate. Then it went to the disc camera, and then I was using the disc camera for a while. And then I, did, you know, I, I discovered a 35 millimeter and what true photography really was. And I was always the guy at the station that was doing. Uh, photography for the different events I was always the guy that always came out with his camera to all like when we would go out with friends and stuff like that and and they got annoyed with it after a while but that's 
you know, what you do, you just don't walk out without a, without a bag. And, um, when I got out of radio, I was trying to figure out what I wanted to do as an adult. What was my plan B? And my wife, Michelle said, well, you know, you've always wanted to do this. Why, Why not? I went to work for a video company, which was probably you could either look at as the worst mistake or the best mistake of my life. It was it was I won't say the name of the company out of Philadelphia, but it was a nightmare situation. And we opened chorus for the wrong reason. I was so ticked off at this guy that I wanted to go and open up our own company so I could steal away his clients and just the wrong reason to open a business. Um, but we did, and and uh, while we did not steal a lot of his clients, we we made our own way, which was, own, yeah, yeah. which was our own. And photography is really what drove it. I mean, that's that's what brought us here. Now, that's why I'm sitting here. Uh, it it's, wasn't the voiceover. It wasn't the the, the reasoning to want to try to get back at people. We just you know when you do something and people feel that you do it well, they call you, and that's where we're at. Gotcha. Gotcha. So, I mean, that's great. Your wife encouraged you to to continue and get into photography. Is that what? You- yes. Uh, she not only encouraged. Uh, can, am I allowed to curse a little bit? Sure. If it's like a, she kicked my ass into it. She oh, really did. Uh, it, it really wasn't. Um, we're. I'm very lucky to have a partner both in life and in the business that kind of fosters that creative side sometimes because anyone that knows me, anybody within the industry that knows me, any of my friends will tell you, I am the first person to shrug off my own work. I don't really think my work is anything great. I think that I am a passable photographer at best and everyone tells me differently and I have a really hard time accepting that because I didn't go to school for this. I'm self-taught. I went to numerous, you know, classes and seminars and and constantly just read and tried and failed and tried again and continue to. I mean, that's that's part of this 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 uh, journey. You don't learn everything in photography. It just doesn't happen. So for me, it was without her there doing that, I, again, I pro- I'm probably not sitting here. Right. Well, a lot of uh, just growing in any business is is trying and failing and learning Yes. in general. And also, you probably learned a lot in, in terms of just your own business acumen of how to deal with clients and, and so on over the years. And, and now that you've taken, you actually take on some other photographers as well, which we'll talk about. Yes. Um, help helping with that side of things we it's really funny we've never really advertised um we have been i would say and michelle's out in the audience watching 90 percent uh 95 percent referral based um the 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 I'm trying to think of the right word. We're, we've been told that we're easy to work with. We put people at ease when they're in front of the camera. People don't like having their picture taken. I don't like having my picture taken, and I joke around on set all the time. If the camera's in my hand, you can't take my picture. So we've gone to really great lengths to make people comfortable in front of the lens, and it's because of that that we've gotten so much referral business. We really try to be light and airy and fun because life's too short sometimes to be otherwise. Well, that, I mean, that's one of the things. Like, people want to work with people they like to work with. Yes. Period. I mean, you could you could be one of the best photographers, but if you're a complete dickhead, yeah. I mean, they're not going to want to work with you again. You can't rub people the wrong way. No, so. no it's, it's a true story. And, and it's something... For better or for worse, we hear within the industry all the time. I mean, it's I will get somebody that will call us and say, oh, well, we used so-and-so, but it was a really bad experience. And I have no doubt... There are people that are out there that have used us that have said the same thing. When we meet with clients, the first thing I say is, have you looked at our work? Yes. Okay. Where did you hear about us? Oh, I heard about you through so-and-so. You know, it's everybody's experience is going to be different, but it's so important that whoever you hire, whether it's me or somebody else, that they like you, that they're comfortable around you. Because if not, if you get on their nerves and they, you know, you can see it, that you can see it on their face. I can be the best photographer in the world. If you think I'm an ass, you're not going to want to work with me. And that's exactly what I say like, sure. constantly. Sure. Um, and so you've been freelance freelance photographer yes. forever, right? Yes. Never been right. So another thing that's sort of interesting, and you have been in, more in the corporate world working for corporate clients. You, I know you do some photojournalistic work as well. Yes. But is that mainly like when you get hired as a corporate photographer to do that style? Or do you actually also work for different publications and so I, we've on? We've done work for publications also. Uh, we do a little bit of everything. And, and anymore, they kind of go hand in hand. I mean, the the journalism business, as, as everybody knows it and, and how I knew it growing up and what it is now, I mean, it's just a, a shell of themselves. Um, most of the photographers that I know at this point are freelancers. They're not necessarily uh, working. I know 
a handful of photographers that are working full time for one state uh, for one station it shows you I'm still back in the in the radio realm for, uh -huh. for one paper for one company. Um, most of the people that I know are doing a little bit of everything, but they kind of roll hand in hand. People are looking for that. Um, they're looking for that photojournalistic quality. They don't necessarily want, you know, something that's so stylized. But and sometimes they do, and it's your job to kind of say, okay, well, we can do it this way, we can do it this way, or maybe maybe we'll try this, and if it doesn't work, we'll go somewhere else. You know, and and it's the only way to do it. It's like any other job. You and, know, this and, is. and right now we're we're looking at some portraiture of yours, and yes. this is. Um Mostly, I would assume corporate clients. Corporate, uh, it's some of it uh, is corporate. Some of it is just people. We work with a lot of actors and celebrities in, in Philadelphia, so some of them are just regular headshots. Headshots and uh, portraits. Yeah. yeah, this was one. This that particular picture is actually um, he was auditioning for Hell's Kitchen. Oh, okay. And needed a professional headshot, and I said, "All right, well, let, let's." We went into his kitchen, and he had this big ass knife, and I said, "All right, I know exactly what I didn't want to do with this." He didn't get cast, but uh, he uh, they 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 did compliment him on the image. So. Oh, that's pretty funny. Um, so um, another thing that I was wanting to kind of hit on was that so you've had years now of experience working with corporate clients. Yes. Um, and there are these days journalists that are. Um, in staff positions that may at some point lose that staff position or move on from those staff positions for one reason or other. And they have been a staff photographer, not, not really, you know, in the market of, of finding clients and so on. So you're working now with, with photographers in that capacity. We are, uh, we just, uh, as a matter of fact, we just opened up in San Francisco with uh, a photojournalist by the name of Scott Strazani, who was right up there. Scott, uh, was with the Chicago, Chicago Tribune for about uh, 15 or 18 years. He's now with the San Francisco Chronicle. He's also, I'm lucky enough to call him a friend. Uh, he's a photojournalist. He is a Pulitzer Prize winner, but at the end of the day, he's just a super awesome guy to work with. And uh, we met uh, a couple, three years ago at the Northern Short Course uh, that NPPA puts on every year. And we just kind of hit it off. We became instant friends. And uh, Michelle and I were out in Sonoma uh, on vacation, and we just happened to be talking. We met up for dinner, and we were talking. And next thing you know, we've opened up out in San Francisco because he has said as much. Like, I'm not going to be spending the rest of my life in newspapers. Yeah. I know this, and I've grown accustomed to life on the West Coast. Right. And it's not cheap. And uh, so after doing our due diligence and going through the process of getting incorporated and figuring out or, you know, is filling out the paperwork out in California to work out there and so on and so forth, uh, we opened up. And the idea is to put photojournalists back to work. A lot of them are, it's for lack of a better term, institutionalized. They've been working within that one genre for so long that when you transfer out to um, as a freelancer and opening your own, there's a lot of moving parts to that. A lot of them don't understand that. So our ultimate goal in opening out in, in San Francisco is to do co corporate photojournalism, but also to start working with a lot more nonprofits. Nonprofits is another very large part of our business. Mm -hmm. And um, the idea is there are a lot of photojournalists out there that are transitioning out or don't know what to do, and they want to work with, you know, they, they still want to work, but they don't know how to necessarily do it on their own. We're kind of helping being to facilitate that a little bit we've got the corporate umbrella we've got the, the the insurances we've got everything that we need we want to put them back to work make sure that they're getting paid but more than that make sure that they're having fun doing it because that's something that i personally think is lacking in any industry right now you have to have fun doing what you do or else you got to find something else to do right so let's jump into a little bit of some of the the charitable work that you okay. do we'll look at some of the photos here because this this is stuff that we're going to talk about tonight actually yes. uh, we have a panel this evening um for this grand reopening at, at adorama um if anybody's watching live you should come on and, and check it out it's gorgeous at 7 PM. In here. they did a really nice job um but uh so anyway um you were mentioning that you you do some work for charitable organizations like Flashes of Hope yes. and, and others. It, Can you talk about that? Sure. It, it started with Flashes of Hope um, six or seven years ago. It was something that I was very much interested in. And as it turns out, going through the process, the person that runs the Philadelphia chapter is somebody that I actually went to high school with, but I didn't recognize right away because she had a married name. So it was kind of, I was like, all right, I'm, I'm definitely at the right place. And Flashes of Hope, what they do is we go into, uh, at least in Philadelphia, we go into CHOP and all their various satellites and we do portraits of children battling uh, various types of cancer. This is a, a perfect picture right here. And 
Sometimes it's the last picture uh, portrait that a family will have of their child. Right. Um, sometimes they're just in their beginning stages. They're at the end stages. Sometimes they're just coming in for checkups and the parents want those shots. Um, it's like any other type of work that you do. Sometimes it's incredibly rewarding and sometimes you just go home and you want to crawl underneath a blanket and not get up. And uh, it's something that really we're, we've been proud to be a part of. And I, I encourage anybody out there that's looking to do some, um, some volunteer type work, uh, check out Flashes of Hope because they're always looking for good photographers. And it's, it really is, it's, it's just a fantastic um, thing. From there, we started with a company in, or an organization in Philadelphia called Phil Abundance. Phil Abundance uh, does, um, is the largest food provider, I think, for people that are... Um, I think it was a few back there. Yeah, there's a, there's a, there's a term that's escaping me at the moment. Uh, food insecure mm-hmm. is, the, is the latest term that they're using. Um, this picture is actually from an event that they have every year in conjunction with uh, WMMR, which is a radio station in Philadelphia, the Preston Steve Show, do a thing called Camp Out for Hunger every year. Uh, Camp Out is actually starting uh, in three weeks down in Philadelphia. We're the photographers for it. Preston and Steve stay on location uh, right outside of Citizens Bank Park uh, for a week in a trailer. And they raise over a million pounds of food annually. It, it actually almost, I think it's half or three quarters of the food that Phil Abundance gets in every year comes from Camp Out for Hunger. Mm -hmm. Um, So that's another one that we've just been absolutely thrilled to be a part of. We've been with them now for about four or five years. Uh, And then additionally, it looks you do work for Habitat Habitat for Humanity. Habitat's an interesting animal. Um, I really got some interesting, I work for Habitat for Humanity of Montgomery County, which is outside of Philadelphia, right outside of Philadelphia. Photography or actually banging on walls? Uh, Just photography. I am, uh, anyone that knows me will tell you I'm not handy. We don't own a hammer in the house that's mine. It's actually (laughs) Michelle's. Uh, I, we, you know, I don't, I grew up in a house without a screwdriver, so I am not handy whatsoever, but I can take pictures. Um, We started with them uh, about three years ago and The interesting thing about Habitat, and I'll talk about this a little more tonight, is the fact that everyone is actually um, separate. While they all fall fall under a corporate umbrella, they all have their own um, budgets and they're responsible for their own budgets and stuff like that. So they actually have to pay money to the corporate. One of the things that we've come up with with Habitat is we actually went online to GuideStar and looked at all their numbers for the local one and we came up with pricing that works for them as opposed to just coming in and saying, all right, well, this is what this is what we do for, for nonprofits and this is what we're gonna charge you. We work with them because without, I think, professional photographers out there donating their time and really trying to get, make, I hate to say make the world a better place because it sounds so cliche, but it, there's, a, there's some truth in it. Um, work with them because without those images, they have a hard time raising the money. Mm-hmm. So that's that's kind of key. So, uh, and that's another another interesting thing to say is that you know, some of these organizations you might donate your time to, yes. and some you charge for. Yes. And and just because some, something's a NGO or whatever doesn't mean that they don't have money to, to pay for f- photography. Yeah, and that's that's one of the great things about GuideStar is if you if you really want to do nonprofit work, and a lot of this I actually, or I'm, I'm going to do a, a cheap plug for my friend Jamie Rose. Uh, Jamie is uh, the owner of a company called Momento Workshops, uh, Mm -hmm. and they do nothing but nonprofit workshops, and that's where I learned a lot of my stuff from. Um, If you go onto a website called GuideStar, I think it's guidestar.org, you can look at their tax returns. You can see how much money they've spent on marketing or how much money they bring in annually and how much they, you know, put towards... uh, 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 can't think of the word. I'm having one of those days where I, after last night being towards whatever brain in, fart, expenditures, yeah, yeah, yeah. it's uh, yeah administration fees. Yeah, um, you can see what it is that they do. I what I do is I look at that number before I even approach them and say, okay, well I know that they've spent this much money on marketing or they've done this in the past or they had a huge bump between last year and this year. And we go in and we actually talk to them. I don't want to break them. I want to work with them because I want to help them accomplish what their vision is for the for the nonprofit. So yeah, you can choose to, I mean, we have a couple, three charities that we donate our time to because as the business owner, I choose to do that. Right. But there are just as, I mean, everyone's got a great story, but you know, sooner or later, if you keep doing everything for free, you're not doing anything for yourself. Yeah, so. all of a sudden you don't have a business anymore. Exactly, yeah. Exactly. Um, so in terms of, you know, your business that you have, it's 
like would you say it's predominantly portraiture work is it is it documentary work it's a little bit there there i don't know if we're really heavy in one part or another i mean a lot of what we do is corporate i mean that's still a large part uh we probably do a handful of weddings a year no more than eight or nine uh right now we're, we're doing a lot of bar and bot mitzvahs because people that i grew up with their Have children their kids, are getting yeah. bar bat mitzvah and it's it's great it's a full circle moment and we've got books it's actually good money too it's it's really good money but even beyond that pardon me it's um it's a full circle thing for me because a lot of my friends that i have i've known since early teens yeah so it's it's a full circle moment for me but at the same time i show up to these oh. events and again we get referred a lot more i mean i've got a handful of friends but this year we've done 20 or 25 mitzvahs already. wow you know, it's because I, all the kids are at the same thing. They're all the same age, and they all need to. It, the parents the, talk. It's it's the honestly, parents talk. Oh, who'd you use, right. and so on. And, and some of them have siblings that are just a few years behind, and it's just you. And we we've got a lot of that. We've, as a matter of fact, uh, between now and the end of the year, we have two or three more, and it's siblings of ones that we've already done in the past. You know, so even if I wanted to take a Saturday off, I can't. Uh, you know, and it's a great it's great, but sometimes you're like, I, you know, I wouldn't mind just sleeping until about eight or nine o'clock for yeah. a change of pace. Yeah. It's it's not easy shooting events like weddings, bar mitzvahs, bat mitzvahs, and those type of thing. It's 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 a lot of work. It's a lot of work, but at the same time, it's no different than doing an event for a political figure. If you're at a you know a, a press a press event or something like that, it's a lot of grip and grins. It's a lot of tap and snaps. It's 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 incestuous. All photography, in some form or another, is the same. They go hand in hand. I don't care if you're a wedding photographer, a photojournalist, an event photographer. It all kind of lends itself to the same. And if you can do one, you can generally do another. Some people aren't built to. You mm -hmm. know, uh, I would much rather do corporate than I would weddings. Uh, and I pick and choose the weddings that we, you know, we will turn work away. I don't like to work with high maintenance clientele. Right. Um, I love what I do. I continue to want to love what I do. And if I start working with really high maintenance people for the dollars, I'm not going to love what I do anymore. And so I make that choice to, to limit what we do every year. So um, in terms of your company and, and its size, do you work with uh, numerous photographers other than Scott as well? Yes, or? we have five photographers that are with us. Then they're all, I mean, they've all got their own gigs as well, but we all kind of come together. Uh, Megan Keller has been with us the longest. She's coming up on six years now. Fernando Gallianese, who is my lighting Sherpa, who is just brilliant. Um, Fernando uh, is... Uh, been with us, I guess, now for about five years. We just hired on um, this incredible girl, Rachel. And and Rachel um, was in Ghana all summer long. She was in Ghana for like 13 weeks, and we were having an NPPA Mid-Atlantic gathering in Philly. Ah. She got off the plane and came to our, our group gathering at this restaurant downtown. Didn't go home, didn't unpack, came right from the airport. We're missing a lot of people like that right yeah. now. I mean, she really has, and she's a, a brilliant photojournalist. She was, she's was, she been doing some really great stuff in and around Philly. So we've all kind of been working together. The nice thing is, is everybody that we have that works for Chorus or has been part of Chorus um, is good at something. Um, Fernando is brilliant with lighting. I mean, just he's fantastic with lighting. Um, I, on the other hand, am like I get those intimate moments, the, the photojournalistic look that everybody hires us for. A lot of it comes from me. Megan is brilliant with just getting the scene. She can look at everything and figure out how the light works and what goes here and what goes there, and she's brilliant with it. Um, Scott can do it all. Scott and Scott, Scott, <laughs> Scott is the the master of of uh, is the master of street photography. I actually, well, when we were out in San Francisco to finalize everything, I got some insight on how he does everything. Nothing the way I imagined it. I mean, it is so ninja esque. Mm -hmm. It's ridiculous. Uh, but he's also good. I mean, he sees stuff before it even happens, and we're really excited about what's happening out in, in San Francisco because I mean, that's going to be huge. It, it's huge for us. It's a great get for us, but at the same time, it's a great get for the companies and the nonprofits that are out in the Bay Area, yeah. because Scott is just a brilliant, brilliant photojournalist. But even more so, he's a great human. Yeah. And that's something that. You know. Well, so what's interesting is you see uh, companies like Getty that are <laughs> starting to do. Um, st they just started a new agency. I forget what it's called now. I'm just having uh, off the top of my head, but we don't need to trunk mention it. or something. I don't know. One of those. <laughs> but they're they're really pushing this like we're going to put photojournalists on corporate shoots. So there seems to be a trend in in that need, I guess. Uh, for yeah, but the problem is it's Getty, you but, know, and you know, look. The one thing that we've always done since the day that we open is anything that's shot for chorus, 
you get to use for yourself. I uh -huh. mean, you know, regardless of whether we own it or not, you still have to make a living. Um, you know, right now it's an idea and San Francisco is kind of like that pilot program and Scott's been awesome enough to, to, to take this journey with us. But at the same time, it's just one photographer. If we don't figure out a way to do it across the country where not only you make a, a, a living, but you have fun. Right. And I, and I can't really stress that enough. It's one of those things that's the, it is the key thing that I've noticed. Everybody that I talk to, whether they've been in the business for 30 years or five years, nobody has fun doing what they're doing. Right. But we all started this journey in photography because we loved it. We have to find your way back to that. And that's part of what we want to do. Right. So one of the things you mentioned, you met Scott at the Northern, Northern Short, Short Course. Mm -hmm. You also mentioned that, uh, was it Rachel? Mm -hmm. You met at a NPPA gathering. Yes. So clearly you um, attend workshops and, and uh, these types of things. Yes. How important do you think it is to be a member of such organizations and go to these types of events? I mean, we met at a workshop as yes. well, actually. Yes. Yeah, we, we met down at Geek Fest uh, in Washington a month or two ago. Um, you know, I think the idea behind it is that everybody can get along. There's enough business out there for everybody. You don't necessarily, and to, to not be necessarily uh, decorum proper, you don't have to be a dick to each other. Like everyone can, there is more than enough work out there that everybody can get along. Um, I've met some of the best friends in the industry through the National Press Photographers Association. Uh, the Northern Shore course, I mean, people, you know, I've met people like Scott. I've met people like Jamie Rose, who was part of the Washington scene for, a long, uh, for so long and is now actually out in Washington State. Uh, I met you. The, the programs that you go to, yeah, they're absolutely geared more towards college kids, but you get just as many veterans that come out that are willing to mentor, that are willing to talk. I'm the Philadelphia local leader for the Mid-Atlantic, and Kyle Grantham, who's with uh, Delaware Online, uh, is our chair mm -hmm. and Kyle and I have been trying to kind of figure out a way to make it a little more grassroots than it's been the NPPA was huge at one point pardon me and then kind of went away and that's because of all the industry changes we're trying to bring it back but not just so much as an organization but for people that you can count on uh, we had somebody that posted in the mid-atlantic Facebook room that was looking for a mentor at age 35 he is uh, finding his dream. He's always wanted to be a photojournalist. He's trying it at 35. At 35 years old, he came onto a Facebook page not knowing anybody and asked if anybody was willing to mentor him. That's what it takes. You have to go to these events. You have to meet like-minded people. If you try to do it on your own, you're not going to get very far. Yeah, you have to be inspired by by folks. You know, I we have Jack Gruber in the audience, and he he knows back in the day before this was before facebook is when i met him in the days of sportshooter.com when that first came out in the in the world in, in message boards and that was when i got truly introduced to the real world of of photojournalists i was going to school for photojournalism not just photojournalists but sports photographers and photographers of, of all types um but i was going to school at that time but it was it, it wasn't it's like you were in your little bubble your your classes the the group that you're with and and the professors talk about different people and sometimes you have a guest speaker all of a sudden boom all of these working photographers are on the internet you're able to communicate with them directly then it was through message boards now it's through facebook right. now and that i mean or everyone text messages, or text messages I mean, and, and everything um so yeah i, I I'll, I'll give you a funny story uh do you know who harry hamburg is i've heard of him okay yeah. so harry was a washington picture for years and years and i have a friend named Aaron. Aaron happens to be harry's daughter now i had <coughs> pardon me, heard of Harry, and I, I knew of him, but I never equated, you know, she has a married last name. Never occurred to me that the two were related. She goes, uh, we were at a party one day, and she goes, you know, my dad really likes your work. I said, oh, well, that's, you know, people see my work on Facebook all the time. You know, I was like, oh, well, I appreciate that. I, she's like, well, do you know who my dad is? I was like, I've, well, my dad's Harry Hamburg. My dad doesn't like anybody. And he, like, like he, like he actively, like, said to her, I, I want to meet him, and I got to meet him last year at the Northern Short, him and Eli Reed of all people, uh -huh. and sat and talked with them for hours and hours and hours. You don't know where the connections come from. A friend of mine who, was in, uh, who is in recovery had a saying that uh, had been given to him years and years and years ago, and it sticks with me, and I use it all the time. 
be nice to everybody you meet because you never know who your next sponsor is going to be. It's the same concept in, in, in this business. You have to be nice to everybody you meet. There's a smile for everybody because you never know who that next you person is going to be. You never want to burn a bridge. You exactly. never want to burn a bridge. And yeah. I've done that plenty of times, but I try to I try to be a little different as I get older and mellower. <laughs> You've learned a few things I, along the way. I've I'd like to think I've learned a few things. Sometimes it's easier said than done. But yeah, we've, you know, I, I'm able to look at it differently in my mid 40s than I did in my mid 30s. I'm curious your thoughts about, you know, NPPA. I know that their numbers are dwindling a little bit. It's, I mean, it's down <sighs> all overall. Of them are. All, all of them are. are. Um, and with, I don't know, I mean, maybe this does, this conversation does get a little political also, yes. but. Um, it needs to be had. It needs to be had. Um, but. <clears throat> First of all, you know, people are people that were staff photographers are losing their jobs, you know, being yes. laid off. It used to be when I was going through school it was sort of the end of that. I decided to go freelance and I'm so glad that I did because I was able to start early and build build from there. Um, <clears throat> so what, what do you see being a, a, you know, working with MPPA, being, you know, the guy in your area? Are you seeing a lot of people having troubles making a living doing doing just photojournalism because now NPPA is National Press Photographers Association yes. that's not I mean while there are people like you and I that are members that also shoot corporate work as well um, most of them are journalists you have to be, in this day and age you have to be look you've got uh, PPA you've got NPPA you've got WPPI which is Wedding Portrait Photographers International <clears throat> the one thing that PPA and WPPI have been able to do brilliantly, and you can kind of look at it in the same way as this last election. They put a great wrapping on everything, and they throw a hell of a party. And people, the people that are just getting into it flock to that, and they go to these events, and there's nothing against WPPI. I mean, I used to be a member of that. I'm not anymore. I'm still an active member of PPA. <coughs> Pardon me. But... They, they do a great job of advertising. It's, it's almost like a pyramid scheme. You know, you can come in and make a million dollars doing wedding photography. Just do what we do. And they've got these rock star, you know, these quote unquote rock star photographers that are Who there. Who spent their whole career building themselves right. to that point. Yeah. But, and some of them have just fallen into it and say, you can make a million dollars a year. And Michelle and I went to P WPPI in Vegas once. And it was like this big cult. And I didn't feel at home. And... But they do a great job of marketing. They do a great job at wrapping this thing up as like, you have to be a part of this. This is so key. PPA does the same thing. PPA is, PPA kind of rides the line between, I feel, WPPI and NPPA. You've got a mix of both that are, that are kind of there. You've got people that are transitioning into photojournalism as freelancers. You've got people that are leaving photojournalism that are doing uh, weddings. You've got somebody, I'll give you a perfect example, is, um, oh God, and his name, what, uh, right out of my head a guy in philly uh, for whatever reason he was with the inquirer for years and oh cliff cliff mountain cliff was with the inquirer for years and years and years and now charges ridiculous amounts of money for weddings and has done really well with it and he speaks at you know at ppa events and wppi events you have to be open to it you have to look at it and say okay sometimes it's better to be a part of an organization and glean what you can from it Take that into your own and move on from there. The one thing that everyone tells me is that I'm great at selling our company. Mm -hmm. I, I'm the son of a salesman. Like I, I learned how to do that at a really young age. I know how to market our company. And if you ever hear me talk about it, it's never me. I will never put my name out there. It's always chorus. I will always say we. I mm -hmm. never say I. Um, and I think that's really important because without the backing of the employees that we have and the photographers that have been with us, we don't exist. Right. Um, it's the same thing when you're making that transition and going to these events and going to the different things where like, you have to listen to what, have, what people have to say. You don't have to take it all. Lean from it what you can and move that into your own business, but that's the one thing that I see a lot of photographers have a hard time marketing themselves and selling themselves. Going to these events and being a part of these organizations help. As far as the future of them, I think they're trying to make a change. I think they're seeing if we want to survive we really have to make some changes it's hard to let part of the old guard go it's hard to let some of that what's brought us here uh mentality filter into how to exist in the 21st century and how to exist in the social media world it's it's a tightrope they're trying to figure it out that's the one thing i've noticed with npp over the last two or three years they really are trying to make a concerted effort to figure it out and how to be welcoming to people that are doing that transition yeah. because not everybody is there. There aren't enough true 
press photographers anymore to make that company. You need to be able to open it up a little bit. And then you have people like me that never worked in a newsroom, but and get published quite a bit and then come in here and proselytize for them because I believe in it. I think it's a great organization. Right. And that was a good transition because the, one of the last things I want to talk to you about was social media yeah. and, and how that's changed over the years. Um, I only have about a thousand Instagram followers, so I don't know if I'm necessarily the best person to talk to. Well, about that, I mean, but, but I'm, it's, oh, it's, uh, it's curious to know. I mean, like after we met at Geek Fest, yes. we became Facebook friends and that's how we stayed in touch. Yes. Right. So there's that factor. Um, I don't I don't know how much you use Instagram and all the other social medias or, or anything and how that has ref reflected or how that has Im not implemented uh, worked in your business. Has it helped your it business has. at all? And, and this is actually more my wife's territory because I mean she kind of works with e-commerce and social media and, and so on. Um, the only thing you'll ever see on my Twitter are my pushes from Instagram because I don't think anybody yeah. cares what a photographer has to say. Like they want to see the images. They don't care about my thoughts on anything. Um, I've always felt that way about our blog too. Like I, I enjoy writing immensely. I have to be moved to write. I have to get that moment to actually sit down and bang out a, a, a blog about something. And I've always said the blog's kind of a dirty word. You know, it's just... I don't want to just throw 10 or 15 pictures up there and say, oh, there's my blog. I want to put content in there and I want I want to drive people. That's to actually it. one of my pet peeves about people that blog is that they just post photos. They don't yeah. they don't have any copy or any kind of context. Yeah, it's you know, it's really funny. Adorama reached out to me and they're they're uh, talking about the nonprofit photography yep. that we're going to be doing. We're going to be on their blog, uh, I think, on the 11th. And I had to actually sit down and force myself to write because it's not one of those things like it just doesn't come to me naturally. Once I get into that train of thought, then I can sit down and pound something out. But I'm hopefully busy shooting and, and editing than I am to have to, to write. Instagram is something that just boggles my mind. I can't figure it out. Pardon me. Um, you look at somebody like Scott, and Scott and I have talked about it. He's got sixty or 70,000 followers, and he goes, but, you know, it, it's random. It doesn't it, – it, sometimes you'll have 60. Next thing you know, you log in. The next day you got 65 because somebody bought something, and then you lose 7,000 the following day. I've built up our eleven or 1,200, however we have, naturally. I mean, right. and, you know, uh, but I'm also – and for everybody out there that's listening, I'm going to tell you a piece of advice and stick to it. Do not like somebody's Instagram page just so they like it back and then unlike them because that is a dick move. <laughs> I actually have I have a I have a uh, an app on my phone, and I can see who likes and unlikes. And you'd be shocked the amount of people that will go. Are you through. talking about like photos or you're following you? No, no, following. Followers, actually, yeah. following your account so yeah. you follow them back. And I'm happy to follow anybody you know that's that's I don't want to say worthy but I mean you know if, if you're just scamming for porn or something like that I'm not gonna follow you back but if you're a photographer and you like my page I will like you back in a heartbeat don't unlike it 24 hours later because I mean then that, that way no one's like I actually want to see your work but if right. you pull that I'm out and I don't care what your work looks like and I don't you know at that point it's it's that's the stuff that stymies me and as far as our website goes I mean we try to update it as often as possible we try to update our Facebook as often as possible I don't snapchat um, I'm 44. I don't have time for that crap. I just I can't keep up with the Instagram as it's it is. So, it's so easy though. It is, but like I, I'll watch my wife and she, do you she, do Snapchat? My, oh, okay. She, but she, like our nieces and and her sister-in-law got her into it. But I'll watch her and she's on the couch going like this. Oh yeah, make the faces. I, I took a picture the other day. It was hysterical because I'm like, you look like a jackass. Like I'm just that. <laughs> but you see people everywhere Aww. doing this. I love. Look, we just celebrated 10 years. I love her dearly. I don't understand half the stuff that she does. But she's, you know, look, she's she's a smarter person than I am. Right. So sometimes I just walk. Well, there's away. different ways to use all the different mediums, and that's for sure. Yeah, so, absolutely. Yeah. Um, so anything else that I haven't really talked about that that, that we want to talk about with regards to your your career and path? Any words of advice to, um, I don't know, maybe some photographers that are getting out of the PJ world and you know obviously you're always interested in looking to work with other photographers we are I mean anybody that's interested in in figuring out what or not even figuring out if anybody's that is interested in talking to us about what our plans are by all means reach out to us um, I, I want to hear from everybody because there there is work out there I mean there is plenty of work out there and we're just starting to get uh, things really moving out west and we're, we've got things moving in Philadelphia um, but I want to go to your home state of Ohio. I want to go to Kentucky. I want to go to Arizona. I want to go to all these places. There are stories that need to be told. We can tell them and we can have fun while we do it. And as far as anybody else out there that's just starting out, 
reach out to a photographer that you admire. Look, I've emailed Heisler. I, like mm -hmm. I, 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 and he's emailed me back. You know, mm -hmm. you don't know unless you reach out to somebody sure. whether or not they're, you know, that they'll listen. You know, yep. the fact that, you know, I tell you the story about Harry, it just goes to show you. I mean, I, it's my friend's dad. I didn't know who it was. Like, I never equated the two. But here's a guy that has been around, that has been honored more times, and likes my work. And it's, you never know who's looking. You never know who's watching. You don't know who your next mentor is going to be. Find a mentor. Find somebody that's willing to listen, whether it's me, whether it's somebody in your hometown. I encourage people to to network as much as possible. That's going to make the difference, especially for photojournalists that are phasing into the freelance aspect of it. Network the crap out of yourself, because if you don't, nobody's your pictures aren't going to be the only thing that sell. You need to be able to sell yourself. And if my dad has a saying that I that I say all the time, sell the sizzle, not the steak. Mm -hmm. And like I said, I don't think I'm the best photographer out there by a long stretch, but I'm easy to work with and I have fun doing what I do. You got some sizzle. I have got a little bit of sizzle, but the people hire us because of that more than sometimes they hire us because of my skills with the, you know, like if it's between me and somebody else and you look at the work and it's kind of the same, that's going to be the difference is your personality. Right. That's, that's huge. Well, that's great. Thank you. <laughs> well, uh, well, um, I think that that that's that, that's great. I think that we're gonna end it there. Okay. I mean, I, I I um I really appreciate you stopping by, mm -hmm. uh, and thank you all for tuning in. Yes, uh, thank you absolutely. again to to Adorama, the use of their event space, Canon Professional Services, Temba Bags, and of course to you, BP, well, and, and Photo Brigade. And, Come on, yeah, and Photo Come on Brigade. now, yeah, right yeah. right here. That's I uh, know I got the we've CPS, got we've even got Brigade. mugs. Yes, I'm excited about, and I I need to I need to pimp out CPS real quick. Yeah, please. I've do. been a CPS member for. That's Canon Professional yeah, services. services for about nine or ten years. I had to drop my gear off on Monday. The, the pins on my one camera were busted, and I dropped a bunch of lenses off for uh, service. That was Monday. I had my lenses back yesterday. I had my camera was at FedEx this morning waiting for me before we caught the train up here. So thanks, CPS. Yeah, you guys they're very are awesome. quick. They really are very, yes. very quick. Good good people there. Um, and then lastly, we should plug your um, website, which is, is it Chorus Course Photography? Coursephotography.com. Uh, on Instagram, it's Chorus underscore photography for those five of you that would like to follow us. Uh, <laughs> Twitter, you're all, it's at Chorus Photog. Um, you're just going to see the pictures you see up on Instagram. Sometimes you'll see a, a, a rant, but not very often. <laughs> uh, and on Facebook, we're, we're on under Chorus Photography. And, and, and for the photojournalists out there, if you'd like to connect, you can always find me under there under uh, BP Miller also. BP Miller. Um, and then also please check out fo the Photo Brigade or just Photo Brigade on all social <laughs> media. Uh, like our page on Facebook. We're constantly post doing Facebook Live yes. uh, chats like this. Uh, panels like tonight um, and come visit us at, at Adorama when we have our events. Um, and that's the, and the panels tonight, right? The panel is tonight. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, that's what you came in for. Yeah. Yeah. So <laughs> NGO and there are some there are some great other panelists that are going to be here as well. Carrie Wagner, as a matter of fact, yep. I've just met down at uh, Geek Fest and she was a sweet, sweet, sweet person. Brilliant photojournalist doing a lot of great stuff with, yeah. with nonprofits. Well, BP, thank you so much Thanks, for making dude. it into I town. I appreciate you having us. And uh, we'll see you all again next time. Take care.